Yeah, we all know about the Stormy Daniels thing coming out. Trump confessing, finally admitting. Um, let's see here. Fifty-six-year-old woman locally in this little town of Palermo. She was shot like a dog. Just she was some crazy lady that was hanging around the hood and I guess talking crazy, and she ended up getting shot like a dog. I don't know what the hell that was all about. You know, I talked about dollar debasement that um, David Knight, the reporter for Alex Jones, has talked about. Uh, since it was, I said 1965 has been debased by 90%. I misspoke. That's since 1913. Over 90% debasement in the worth of the currency since its inception in 1913. You know, and the point on, uh, you know, the Labor Department uh, giving commensurate cost of living adjustments, I am, I believe in that. That could have stopped all this debasement of currency and this, you know, soaring cost of living tax, this horrendous situation we're in. That's got no end in sight. I mean, this is horrible. This cannot end well. There has to be trauma somewhere. It's going to be traumatic when this, you know, ship comes to a stop and this train comes to a stop before it can turn and get on a new trajectory. A lot of people are going to freak out, man, thinking that, you know, they're going to be rendered irrelevant. They're going to be made poor by what's going to happen here. But, um, you know, they don't need to. And it's a two-way street. It's just like, look, one dollar, let's go back 55 years. Minimum wage was about a buck an hour. Okay. Well, that minimum wage now, today, could be 50 cents an hour. Now, that's got to be music to employers' ears, right? That's what I mean. It's a two-way street. But here's the caveat. That 50 cents, in terms of buying power, could be worth $5. So if $1 would buy you what it bought 55 years ago, okay, then it would have been like having $5 then. So that's why you could cut that in half to 50 cents, and it's still worth $2.50 buying power. So you're still phenomenally richer with two dollar with 50 cents an hour than you were with one dollar an hour you understand so it's a two-way street here you know let's let's be very clear about that and yes more than one way to skin a cat yeah my preference is just sound economic policies true capitalism uh, rather than a basic income yeah i but you know what we've got to grab the bull by the horns and do whatever it takes though yeah, 30000 a year, at least make sure everybody's got housing and food and clean water and energy needs met. Man, you see the traffic on the L.A. freeway go way overnight. All these perks, your taxes will go way down because there's, you're not paying the criminal industrial complex so much anymore. And you're not paying $50 billion a year to Section 8 housing. That just makes the problem of homelessness worse. Okay, you're not paying for these dubious wars. Trillions of dollars going there. You're not supporting the national debt and the debt industrial complex for all these people working in the financial services industry. So, yes, your taxes, your cost of living and cost of living would go way down, way down with a basic income. Traffic go away, abortions go away, prostitution go away, drug use go away, all this escapism and all these vices going away, dubious war, go, all this stuff go away. So if you're opposed to a basic income, just remember the things by default that you're for. Those horrible, horrendous plagues upon humanity's soul that you're for. Sorry, but that's just the way it is. If I sound like, uh, you know, I'm being hyperbolic and being mean, I, I'm sorry. I'm just being true to myself. And if it triggers people, I, I just, I'm just being honest, folks. I'm trying to be as intellectually honest, nuts and bolts, pragmatic, logical, reasonable as I can. You know, it's written in the book of James that a man that can tame his tongue is called perfect. Can you imagine scripture goes so far as to say a man that can tame his tongue is perfect? To me, that's beautiful. Just gives you the power of, you know, just, wow, that God really wants us to speak the way he wants us to speak, to reflect him, to re represent him properly. And that's profound, man. That takes some real, like, soul searching, man. That takes being really introspective and circumspective and... And being sober-minded and stuff, man, that's a big deal. Really, you know, it's not what goes in the mouth that defiles a man, but what comes out, like Jesus taught. What a huge forest fire is set, af set ablaze by such a small spark. All these things are very true and scientific. Yeah, educate the people. Educate the people, but you know the mainstream media that should be understood. That's part of their job, but they're not doing. They're utterly remiss. 
we got a lot of people in positions of education that are utterly remiss. The mainstream media, the colleges and universities, all the teachers, because they're handed a curriculum, say, teach this, don't teach that. It's just a crock of bull. We're all just being manipulated to the nth degree, up one side, down the other. The entire establishment is ridden with fraud, rife with fraud. Okay, imbued with fraud, marinated in fraud. We're steeped in fraud, like a pile of dung up to our noses now, folks. And it's going to be painful to extricate ourselves from this. And a lot of people are going to freak out, man. They do not want God's will established on earth. So we're, they're going to really try to pull out all the stops on manipulating us and keeping us stupid and confused and ignorant and disempowered and off balance, lacking confidence, lacking empowerment. And so, you know, that's it, man. All we have to do is more Babylon is going to try to shove down our throats. They're going to push the climate thing and say, well, this is why. Yes, this guy is telling you the truth. We could end poverty worldwide tomorrow and everybody could have cars and we could do all this. But don't you see? It would wreck the environment. We'd destroy the earth. So we're the good guys. We're the altruistic ones. We need austerity. Yes, we're doing it on purpose. Yes, we're implementing austerity on purpose, please, but it's to save the earth. That's why people have to die. We need 90 plus percent of the people to volunteer to go to a death camp, you know, but they themselves don't volunteer. I had a woman here locally, this woman, the reporter on the street, this woman said, well, there should be less people with a big fat smile. Oh, yes, I wish there was less people, but she doesn't offer to be one of those to go away, you know. You see, that's how these people are. So the devil's in the detail. We all are struggle, battle our own demons. And I just don't want that elitist demon, man. That's one I reject from my soul, man. I'll take the others. I'll struggle with those and hand them over to God. Okay, and everybody knows I got them, man. Everybody, my family, my friends, strangers, whoever's spying on me, they all know I got demons I'm struggling with. I, they teach people this stuff. You know, I mean, the crap they teach people in college, I mean, good God almighty. For example, health science. You know, health science, what is it, mental health science? No, no, it's all about the body, physical health science. So we're going to teach you that you need to have sex in order to be healthy. And this is how you have sex. They tell people that, it, essentially, they teach you to be a wanker, for example. That's just one example of, 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 of this male teaching they give you in class. You don't have to be a wanker. Talk to a doctor. There's no physiological need your body has for you to have, uh, an, for men, for example, to ejaculate. Okay, it'll come out in your sleep. You'll dream of a beautiful woman. This is what happens. If you're a heterosexual man, I don't know what a homosexual man, I don't know about his nocturnal emissions. But nature has a way of relieving you. So you don't have to. You might choose to. I've talked to doctors. They say, well, people, you know, psychologically, they're, you know, taking control of them, their body and all this. And, and for crying out loud, this is what the doctors are taught, too. They're taught, well, you know, you just uh, you, you lust. You look at this woman. So they teach you adultery. According to the Bible, they're teaching you to commit adultery. They're teaching you to sin. This is one example, just one of many sundry examples that, you know, I can't pull off the top of my head. But they teach you to be a wanker. That's right. In college, that's what they teach. Health science. You need this. I mean, and women too. I mean, they teach women that you got to, you know, play with your, your goodie, your, your uh, you know, your, your, your cookie jar, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and, uh, you know, men got to, um, you know, play with theirs, their, their thingy. And so, um, you know, it should be no surprise that people are so prone to this. When we know this is, you know, not only do we have our own struggles with these things, natural, inherent, okay, but that we're being trained, educated. This is part of the depopulation thing. Is keep people away from them. Don't teach them, hey, you know what? You see a woman or a man as an irresistible urge. You, you want to hook up, man. You know, you go out there and, and get married and have children. I mean, this is very natural and godly and procreation. And God said, you know, you're making some another child of God out there. You put out in the world if you impregnate a woman. And, you know, this is a beautiful thing. But, uh, you know, they'll teach you to do the opposite. So I kind of went on that uh, subject for a long time. But, uh, but, you know, it's just one example of, you know, these people are supposed to be educating us properly and giving us a good well-rounded education and they're cutting edge too that's the thing about the mainstream they're the cutting edge they they are the, the you know every day we turn on we want to be informed information is education education is information right and so but what are we getting 
we're getting a bunch of bull. We're getting a bunch of bull most of the time. I mean, when they're reporting car accidents or fires or natural disasters, fine. That's on the up and up for the most part. But there's a lot of stuff that they're just not reporting on. They're not reporting on the chemtrailing program that's been going on for decades. Now, if they try to talk about it, you know, the same thing. But the, they don't they, they don't report the UFO issue fairly. They have this laughter curtain. We got the military industrial complex covering this stuff up, muddy in the waters. They confuse the issue. That's the mud they throw in the water. Well, they throw some doubt in there, a reasonable doubt. Well, no, you're just crazy if you think there's possibility of visitors from other planets. You're... <laughs> You know, the laughter curtain, you're stupid, you're an idiot, you're not scientific, right? And so the mainstream media, they got that same thing going on. It's, oh, no, what they saw later, it's explained. Oh, that was just a meteor. Or, you know, that, that they're, they're hallucinating. They saw something. It was a trick of light. It was swamp gas or some crap like these UFOs back in 19, what was it, 47? That buzzed the, the White House, you know, this whole fleet of UFOs. This crap's been going on since the beginning of time. So this whole idea that these people want to play, you know, educators and truth tellers, you're going to get the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth from this news agency or that. It's a bunch of bull, man. You got to find out. You want the truth, the whole truth, nothing but you got to find it out. You got to fight. You know, they talk about freedom not being free. It's not. If you want to be empowered with the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. If you want to clear the mud out of your lake, you're in, you have that choice, then you can do it. But it's through knowledge, wisdom. Okay. And this is something that's accumulated for thousands of years. You have a right to share in what your foreparents paid. <laughs> the price they paid. Like the Protestants making sure the Bible came through with some semblance of validity to it. Uh, they couldn't change everything. And it's written in Scripture that to test the Spirit. So whenever you read your Bible, you've got to say, is this valid teaching I'm hearing? Is it consistent with the other teaching, what I know about God? Does it all fit together like a puzzle? If so, then you're getting the right teaching. You're tapped into the right Spirit. But we're told to test the Spirit of everything we hear, think, and read, and see. It's just, you know, is it really from the heart and mind of God, or isn't it? And uh, it's a big deal. So you want the truth, hold it to nothing but truth, but nothing but the truth, you've got to go seek it out yourself. Uh, Alex Jones had Ben Garrison and um, and uh, the creator of Dilbert Scott uh, Adams onto the show last Friday. Uh, I just love both these guys. Absolutely excellent individuals. I just I cannot say enough. Um, give these guys enough accolades. It just you know, I'm just so glad that there's other people that are you know carrying the weight of this cross, man. Because that's it, man. That's what we're called on to do. You mean if you're for real. You'll jump in the fray. You'll jump in that pool of humanity. You'll go get your fair share of abuse. And you will, um, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll trigger people, not because you're trying to trigger them, just because you're exercising your, your, not only your right, but your duty to free speech, to being true to yourself, being a good American, being a good human being. I already talked about why I object to this Robert Wright character and what he said, calling himself posing as this liberal saying all these seemingly altruistic good things, and then he, what is, he's just a standard socialist. Tax and spend. Take from the haves, give to the have-nots, and I'll set the rules. I'll decide who gets what and who's worthy and who's not. I don't like him. I'm sorry. My opinion has changed, and I don't believe he's an egalitarian. I don't believe he's a good American. I don't believe he believes in equality. He's an elitist, I think, posing as, an, as a liberal. And talk about influence. The guy's a professor at, at Cal State Berkeley. I mean, Jesus, help us, God. I already talked about all this stuff I'm looking at here about drugs and why people choose escapism. You know, this is what the, the mainstream media, they need to talk about this stuff. They need to touch on it. Educate people. Just tell them how you're going to destroy your body if you do meth. They used to, they were, they did start showing before and after, before people use meth and after what they look like, their teeth are all rotten out of their heads and yeah, they're all decrepit and unhealthy. So that's the kind of, that's what I mean about educating people. That's not, that's going to turn a lot of people away from using meth. I'll tell you that much, but they stopped doing it. They stopped running those ads because they were too effective. I'm telling you folks, there's people that want the problems to persist. They want people dying of drugs. God, it's so evil. I mean, you, to wrap your mind around this crap, if you're a normal human being, halfway normal, is just maddening. It's so hard to believe people could be so freaking evil in the world. 
but they they are and they never talk mainstream media never talks about the drivers of why people seek escapism and vices through the drugs and alcohol, all this crap, the, you know, the mental health, the spiritual health, emotional health, psychological health of people, and how that plays a big role and why people you know, feel a need to escape and engage in this metaphorical, allegorical slashing of the wrists through this escapism and you know, just, just dissipating time, these self-destructive, self-flagellating t tendencies people